What's up, y'all? This OG Weasel, Urban Conversion. And I'm back again with another story. This this story I'm, I'm about to give y'all, this is a story of me being in Beaumont Medium. And um, it's a story about me and the little homeboy from... Uh, when I call him the little homeboy because he... Uh, he he of, he of my origin and descent, so, and he's young. Well, anyway, I'm OG Weasel Urban Conversion, man. I did 20 years on a 30-year federal sentence. You get 30-year sentence, man, you got to pull 26 years on this 30 years. No if, ands, buts about it. I was blessed and fortunate enough to be um, um, awarded the um, clemency program, man which let me out after 20 years and three months. So I said, I'm gonna put this YouTube channel together, man. I'm gonna tell these horrific stories, man. And I hope and pray that these stories I give you, man, not to glorify no tough man, no, none of that. I'm just telling you about my life experience and the certain things that I went through in life and some of my comrades um, incidents that they went through, you know, so got a lot to tell you about the ins and the outs of federal prison um and if by chance man you got a family member that's um in the streets that's doing whatever they doing this and that um i hope these stories can enlighten you to get them to tell tell them what they will be facing if you get indicted with the federal government 85, 98% uh, conviction rate, man. Don't nobody want to battle them and the ones that do, you know what I'm saying? Still, it ain't just because you got a lot of money and think you can spend it with the federal government and think you're going to beat your case because you got money. Now, nah, this ain't the state. Federal government make the money, so you, you, you do the math on that. So, like I said, man, I went to trial 1998. I was sentenced to a 30 year sentence. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately did 20 years, three months on it, man. And I'm telling y'all these stories, man, that because I hope you get something out of it or you can relate a message to somebody. Because I'm telling you the truth. And if you don't, and, I'm, and, and it's easy just to be in jail. Everybody think it's easy to be in jail. Now it's not just easy to be in jail. You have to be in jail and just because you in jail don't mean you stop thinking. Because you can stop thinking in prison and cost you the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? Cost you the rest of your life. You can go in with a three-year, four-year, five-year sentence and turn it into a, 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 a letter, a life sentence. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Like I said, man, I'm gonna tell y'all about this story that happened to me, and, and this is a story that I was involved in, situation that I was involved in in Beaumont, Texas. 1990, 19, 2006, um, Beaumont was integrating people back into the on the compound. This Beaumont medium now. It's a whole complex. It, the U.S. fees, the medium, it's a low and it's a count. It's a complex. And what I liked about Beaumont is that they had a lot of black staff. You know what I'm saying? So coming from this little small peak in, um, peak in Illinois, where it's inbred as, um, you know, people that ain't never even been around black people in Illinois. So they got a prison. So anyway, stick to the story. I'm in Beaumont, man, and uh, we opened it up, man. We got acclimated in it. They start filling it up. It was full, you know what I'm saying? Everybody in a position. And basically, it's, it's, it's Mexicans and blacks. That's all it pretty much is. Now, when you get into it with the Mexicans and all of that, you get into it with the Tongo Blast on this yard. You don't have to fight the whole Tongo Blast. And every other Mexican, the Pistoleros, any other group that got something to do with uh, the Tongos. So anyway, or 
any other Mexican group. You get into it. But anyway, stick to the story. I'm just trying to paint a broad picture of where we at and what we looking like. And I have been in a, a while, so, you know, my demeanor and my, my everything, how I looked at things is just like it's us against them. But we can still be men, uh, man to man, uh, men to man, men on, you know, what I'm saying just being righteous with men, you know, what I'm saying in the human race. But this how this structure is. Oh, man, you got to be together, man. If you're trying to have a voice in in this um, political part of this prison, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, Sean was from Alabama. Get better stick to the story, man. Sean was from Alabama, man. Like to play sports. He used to go out in the hoop, and play basketball. You know what I'm saying? I used to play a lot of handball and uh, little shit like that. But like I said, when, when they opened Beaumont up, I was coming from Pekin, Illinois. I had been in a while. I had been in Greenville and Terry Hub before then. So I had been in a while. So it was like, all right, I'm a little more seasoned. Now that I'm being around a custom coming out the Midwest that predominantly like the blacks was in charge, you know what I'm saying? Coming out the Midwest, I seen and going to the South that coming to the South and being in like Texas and shit like that. These Mexicans in this prison, they work together, they stick together, they do everything together. Even if, you know, Tongo, Tongo Blast was the biggest Mexican on the yard. So they pretty much got to say so of who get to walk the yard other than Tongo. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I was just painting a picture of, of, of that situation, man. So anyway, and I'm a little older, so I got a little uh, wisdom with me with my decision making. I just don't jump off and take off on motherfuckers no more and just blah, 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 just because he said something wrong to me and this and that. Use a little diplomacy with my situations. And yet again, this the, this one I'm finna get to telling you about the diplomacy that I use for Sean. Well, it's it's me, Sean, and Steve-O. Steve-O, a white boy from... Uh, can't remember where Steve-O from. The boondocks of Arkansas somewhere. I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? He from like... Ark Somewhere in Arkansas, a little small town, somewhere in Arkansas, he was there for making um, counterfeit money. So, he in there for making counterfeit money. But in Beaumont, they got what you call a uh, unicorn. Unicorn is like the job inside the job where it's like a warehouse. And we actually made army helmets. Not army helmets, but marine helmets and army helmets for the war. Any war from the last 20 years, 20 plus years back, uh, minus a couple years, a few years back. But any war from then on, Beaumont pushed out production for the marine helmets and the helmets. I worked in there, you know what I'm saying? That's a little job inside prison where you make a couple hundred dollars a month and then you turn around and spend all of it in one day at the damn um, store. But not everybody because there's some guys that really living and thugging off that and putting themselves in position for when they did get out years later. They would save them pennies and them nickels and dimes till they, you know, finish up their sentence so that they can have some money when they come home if they ain't have people.